Good evening, DLL. Question for you three or whoever answers. Ivory towers are very prolific in manufacturing companies, DOD subcontractors included. Uh, how do we better guard against detached decisions? I don't know. It's tough because even making a conscious effort to talk to people and work in the trenches at this company as we've grown, it hasn't always been easy to fully understand the daily challenges that people have. Uh, we had someone raise a concern. So I was frustrated on a shoot recently when a prop that was integral to the intro was not sourced. Um, well, A, we, we had it at one point, but at some point we lost it. And then when we realized we lost it, we didn't source a new one. And I, 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 I landed on set and I was like, whoa, I can't arrive on set and like the intro doesn't work because the prop I need for the intro isn't here. We don't have one. This was so preventable. And the conversation that ultimately came out of, out of that was, hey, we don't have a process for just anyone making a petty cash decision and then begging for forgiveness later. There just isn't a means for it. And it was a funny thing for me to think about because even before I ran my own company or whatever, that was 100% something that I just did. If something was like 50 bucks and I knew that I could defend it to the CEO, I would just spend the $50 and worry about it later. But I, that, is, that is not a recommendation. <laughs> if, there, if there's... No, for real though, right? Like I got away with being a bit of a maverick, but that's not that's that's not necessarily good you for would, your career. You now would deal with managing you back then. Oh god. <laughs> I, it would actually be like quite the clash. I would be very frustrated. Both yeah. of me would be very frustrated always. Yeah. Anyway, the point is <laughs> what came out of that was that hey, we don't have a formalized, like one of uh, CEO Taryn's favorite words is explicit. We don't have a formalized process that gives people explicit permission to make a decision like that. Um, a lot of people just do it anyway. So especially people who have been around since up, the I, old days and who have <laughs> been doing it for years, but especially new people don't know. They don't realize they come from other companies where, where spending 20 bucks that you weren't allowed to spend could literally mean getting a dressing down. Right. Like I, and that's so, that's so foreign to me. Like I, that doesn't make sense in my world because I never worked in that environment and I'm not going to foster that environment here, it but that's a thing. Inefficient. Yeah. I came across my supposed uh, approval limit. I don't remember when this was, like a few months ago or something, and just erupted with laughter. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> I, I have approved things wildly beyond this many times. Like, uh, okay, yeah. That's actually bad, though. I didn't know. No one told me. Oh, my God. Because the approval limits were set up when Floatplane was completely separate. So it was genuinely not communicated to me at that time. So like our Cloudflare contract, which is like enormous, <laughs> certain other ones. I fought for the best, genuinely fought for like the best thing we could get in a lot of these occasions. And that's the thing though. is if, Which I think is why I didn't get in trouble. <laughs> in, in good faith, if you are doing the best thing for the company and you can defend it. Like that's that's honestly the the guiding star that I lived by was could I argue this and win? Yeah. And if I can argue it and win, then the conversation's over. And this is not advice. <laughs> and realistically, the trust level goes up. It can. However, if you, if you just do what you think is right, and it turns out that either you weren't right or your boss is an idiot and doesn't understand you were right, it could be very harmful it to your career really prospects. Bad. It could even get you fired depending yeah. on what's going on. So like it's, it's genuinely not advice. But. Yeah, and that end, uh, my, my mom loves to, loves to phrase things this way, especially around like traffic lessons for the kids. Uh, she goes, it doesn't matter if you're in a crosswalk. It doesn't matter if the light is red. It doesn't matter if you see the little walkie man. You check you make sure they are actually breaking because sure you can you, you can be right 
and dead. But you'll be dead right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's, it, those, are, those are words to live by in everything. You know, walking across the street, uh, career, relationship. It doesn't matter if you're right if you get killed in the process. Yeah. <clears throat> XG Ford says, boss is idiot is the issue. That's fair enough. Uh, Data Frickin says, got hit in a crosswalk. Yeah, 100%. Yep, yep. Arbiter K says, I was hit by a car when I was on a crosswalk. Had the right of way. 100%, man. I, uh, I, I didn't take a course until I learned to ride a motorcycle. And what I found out was I just kind of naturally do a lot of defensive driving things. But one of them is that I do not start moving when a light turns green. No way. Scan. I am making sure... I'm making damn good and sure that the cars on both sides are decelerating with enough space to not enter the intersection every single time. I've right. been honked at because I've been like, I have not determined that it is safe to proceed yet. And I'm just sitting there. Um, I had a, I, I've a very clean driving record. I've never hit anything. I've never been hit. I've, everything's nice. I had a scare the other day. It was raining really, really hard. Yeah. Visibility was not very good. I'm turning in a, uh, it's like off a seldom used street into a parking lot. There's someone that comes out from behind my pillar. Like I couldn't see them and they're wearing all black. Visibility is terrible. It's raining and I see them come to a stop and I slam the car into a stop at the same time. And it's like possible that that could have been bad. And I was just like, um, and like, cause like, it doesn't matter. They're wearing all black. It doesn't matter that it's raining. It's oh my yeah, fault. It's still your fault. Yeah. Uh, CEO Taryn, CEO Taryn has, uh, had a really good, uh, trick that, uh, I've used since I saw him do it. Uh, whenever he goes around a blind corner, um, he'll flash his beams or honk. Like if it's a bad blind corner and I saw him do this in a parkade was where, where it like was where it fir first came up to give you some idea, like how blind this corner needs to be. Don't, don't honk your horn every time you turn your car, obviously. Uh, but like, um, that's a good one. Yeah, in uh, there's a there's a par there's a parking lot that I often pull into that has an uncontrolled T intersection where there is not a lot of traffic. And you may have even seen me do this, but if it's nighttime, I flash my beams as I'm going toward that intersection to make sure that it's obvious someone is coming. You never, you never know. Like people, people get hit by trains and that's not because they're dumb. It's, well, sometimes it is, but it's often not because they're dumb. It's because it's not always obvious unless there is like motion there. So there has to be something to break us out of our, uh, out you of our be zone. Super zoned out. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I, I have caught myself being really aggressive about like physically moving myself so that I can check behind pillars whenever I'm going around corners. I've always been really good about checking for bikes, all that other type of, type of stuff. But I, I realized in that moment that I don't think I've been super good about making sure there isn't a thin pedestrian behind the pillar. <laughs> You know, it's something I've noticed too. As I'm getting older, shoulder checking is more work. <laughs> it's like actually harder now. That's interesting. Like I don't I think used, I really thought about that. But I yeah. used to be, I used to be like skinnier and just, just you know, just generally wirier. Like I didn't take up as much space. Uh, like I've probably since I since I worked at NCIX, I've probably put on about twenty five pounds, which uh, at for five six is like a fair bit. I'm just like generally stiffer. Like I'm just always like sore from working out. In, or your, in your defense, I think a lot of it's been m muscle. Yeah, but I just mean like, like I was just like, you know, just like moving around in a seat. Yeah. It was easier. It does get harder. Yeah. yeah. Um, and like, you know, you know, my neck's stiffer than it used to be and stuff. So, so it's, it's something that I, I realized a little while ago and I was like, okay, I need to make a very conscious effort. Cause I, I was the kind of person who would like make sure I've got nothing in front of me and like, look behind me like not a peripheral vision shoulder checker i was like anything back there let's go yeah um but yeah just i just my my cheapness doesn't want my insurance rate to go up <laughs> so i don't want to hit anything that is not the reason <laughs> and i care about everyone being perfectly safe all the time <sighs> can you at least try to convince me <laughs> hey man they both count what a dick. <laughs> At least your car is already red. All right, Dan, what are we supposed to be doing? <laughs>
That's a good point. My, my, my leather is white. Do you know how? Do you know what a bad decision that was? <laughs> Again, as, you, you can keep doing topics if you, you want. As age even further and the incontinence sets in. <laughs> oh! I mean, there's that too. Oh! Oh! Chipotle. I mean, we saw Dan Lee King in the uh, Badminton Center tour. Oh, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> what? There was like a puddle on the floor, and I made an offhand joke about Dan mm. peeing himself or something, yeah. or like I was just getting over food poisoning, something. And he goes and like, "What did you do? You like crouched over it or something?" I don't remember. I actually that. can't remember. Yeah, he did something. Everything here like is just a, a fever a dream. It's just like Dan, the joke you've taken the you've taken the joke was awful it's for and the uncomfortable. Editors and to to cut back. Yeah, <laughs> the editors can find the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who has more power in this company than the editors? For real, though. Oh, they can make or break you. Yeah. It, it, they are the most important oh, thing. they absolutely can. That's, yeah, that's something Ed taught me early on. Not, not in, like, by doing it, by making me look terrible. Yeah, because you were all like never piss off your it admin and he was like never piss off your editor because <laughs> he, he kept excuse saying, me when, when he first joined he kept saying like it's all in the edit it's all in the edit and i was like ah, it's all in the edit, way yeah. and then i was like oh yeah <laughs> we'd film something i'd be like this was trash no one's ever gonna want to watch this and it comes out of the edit i'm like wow it's pretty good it's pretty watchable <laughs> it's like, oh, okay like a couple frames can make you seem like a non-funny like bumbling idiot Yep. Or sharp-witted and hilarious. Dude, it's just, actually, like, frames. Even it's just nuts. adding, yeah, exactly, a little bit onto the end of every clip, so you just seem like you're kind of... Nothing lands, yeah. and there's, like, awkward pauses, yeah, and then you turn like, back, no. and oh. it's great. Oh. Or the whole roast video that had no laughter no laugh in track. it. It's yeah. amazing. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, to be clear, it didn't need a laugh track. People were losing it. Um, but we didn't have the, we didn't have the audience mic'd. Yeah. Ironically, one of the first productions we ever did where we hired a professional AV company to come in and run the production for us. <laughs> I had, we had so many comments on that video. Yeah, these dummies never get it right. Blah, 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 blah. It's like, it wasn't even us. Oh, come on. I mean, we do make mistakes. Absolutely. But if I'm going to own mistakes, I'd like for them to at least be our mistakes. It's got six million views. Yeah, it did okay. Hmm. It's really funny. I've gone back and watched it a couple times I, i'm sure i've said this a bunch of times but i i i'm guessing on i on average i watch it like once a year yeah it's so funny i always forget at least a good chunk of it yeah dennis and yvonne are so good oh man yvonne <laughs> did not hold back no 